There's not many doors or many places I can't get into without a, you know, with a fireman dagger. It's a great tool, great necessity. Have our helmet. Keep our head. This is like AA helmet. It's got a raised spine here so things can come down. It'll deflect off, no problem. It's got a sloping bill so water and embers and fire will come off off my neck. So that's our helmet. It protects our this is your precious uh, resource there. Sorry, I had all of that. Fire Fighter Phillips, go ahead and put on everything that you do. I'm just wearing the pants right now, but he's going to go ahead and operate it on. Help! That's our breather. I'll show you how that works. Yeah. When you go inside the fire. Exactly. Exactly. He's going to show you everything right now. But again, this is fire resistant. It's not fire proof. So there is a large element of danger when we do go in the fire to, to help you guys out. And we're, we're training the academy to, to don all of our PP. How long does it take you to get dressed in the morning? <laughs> Ten minutes. We have to get everything on in one minute. When the bell rings, we get everything on. We're dressed, fully ready to go in one minute. We're doing a slow demonstration style here, so no big deal. We're not going to time them. Let's okay, see, put us on his back. Put some weight on it, right? Oh, yeah. yeah it's about, that alone is about 35 pounds. The rest of the equipment itself, the coat and the jacket is about another 30 pounds. Axe probably about 5 pounds. So, I mean, you're looking at about 75, 80 pounds of just equipment alone. Not counting the tent. No, not counting the tent. 35 by itself. So that's like 80 pounds. Yeah, about 80 pounds. So Firefighter Phillips is fully suited up, ready to go. You can see he's got his hood here. It's going to come over his head, protect his ears. So show you how this uh, breather works here too. It's got air. It's got oxygen in it. Okay. And we carry in our front pouch here a mask. We carry a mask in there. So that's going to go over his face. It's going to complete. You know scuba diving? Has anyone heard of scuba diving? That's what we call it. We call this an SCBA without the U. Self-contained breathing apparatus. So it's got a rubber seal, a silicone seal. That's why we can't have beards. We can only have mustaches. So it's going to create a seal that goes completely around his mouth. His head's completely protected right now. Fire resistant, like I said, not fireproof. And he's going to attach right here. See how the air is right there? He can attach his second state respirator. Now he's completely breathing out of the bottle right there. That's it. He's fully suited up. He's ready to fight fire. He's ready to go in and save somebody. That's, about, I mean, that's, that's all the equipment we have to wear. That's just our base equipment we have to wear. Then you've got to take for consideration we're dragging in a hose. We might drag in extra equipment. We have long pipe poles that we carry in. We might have these ladders. ladders. See this giant ladder here on the side of the truck here? We throw that with two members. So it fully suited up like he is right now. It's all stuff we learn in the academy and train on constantly. This is a one-person ladder right here. This is a one-person ladder right here. This is a 20-foot ladder. Yeah, it's a 20 foot ladder, we don't have one person. Oh, but the way that was a big plane, man, I was helping the fire. Or just recently? Yeah, last night. Oh, yeah, I know, I heard them going out. We had one, we had one ourselves, oh. a little hole fire, so we were out on that. But uh, yeah, I was turning on the radio, we didn't get a chance to go. Exactly. Yeah. Like, we have our first in area, and if we get a fire there, it's just, you know, call it. We have different categories, an A, B, or C fire. So if it's something smaller, you know, send that to many, not as many people, but larger they'll go. Like I said earlier, with our, our budget cuts, this wouldn't get this wouldn't go anywhere. We'd have to wait even longer for another truck to come and come help out. So unfortunately, you know, that's the way we live. We've got to do more with less right now. Everybody, exactly. You know, exactly. Unfortunately, how it is. Um, we're gonna take you outside real quick, show you around a little bit more. Thank you. Everybody, give a pop. Uh, a quick hit, people Okay, and this right here, this is what Firefighter Douglas and myself worked on. 
We are cross trained, we're firefighters. So we do go into fires and fight fires, but we're also paramedics, so we're trained on that side too to, to help you out if you got trouble breathing, you got pains, you got burns, anything like that. That's what we're also here for, okay? Um, it's as simple as that, it's an ambulance. Uh, today, Firefighter Douglas is driving. I'm attending, so it's his job to, to get me there safe. It's my job to make sure the patient gets there safe. And then we work together to accomplish both tasks. Um, all this really is, is we have a gurney here. We'll pull this down for you. Try not to touch or anything like that. We do keep our equipment clean, but you, know, you can't catch everything all the time. Basically, we have three pieces of equipment. We've got our medical box, keeps all our drugs, shots, needles, everything like that, medicines. So it's kind of like a tackle box, like you ready to go fishing? Exactly what we use. Okay, this is our heart monitor. Basically it'll take a picture, it'll look under your skin and take a picture of your heart. You ever see like in the ER shows or your Grey's Anatomy where it's got the beep, beep? That's what this machine is right here. So it does different to, uh, it works here, perfect. So it just turns on, we got all our electrodes that can hook up your heart. This also we can zap you too, you ever see them on the show where they zap. We don't do it like that, we have a button we press, but this machine does everything. And then this is the simplest, easiest thing, all we carry in this is oxygen. It's pure O2. Exactly, exactly. Put a little mask on you, put a little O2. Most of the time that'll help everybody out. But other than that, we just keep, uh, like we have our full equipment, we have our own uh, breathers, we have our own everything on here. So we'll Everything on the side, we just keep minor tools, not as many tools as the truck, so if the ambulance gets in a little bit of trouble or we need some help, we'll definitely call out the the uh, an engine or a truck or something in case the patient's trapped, they need to get executed, there's a little fire, there's something that needs help. And everything out here, like I said earlier, we we try to stay fit. We're allotted about an hour of uh, of time every day to work out and stay fit. We're, we're not allotted, we're instructed to. We have to do that. So you can see we've got some basketball hoops. Some of the guys will play basketball. We have different games we play. And you've got to kind of keep a light heart and have fun while you're working. So we're trying to do that. The other piece of equipment back here, every fire station is going to have a plug buggy, which is what you see right here, this uh, Ford pickup truck here. So that's what we used to for everybody. We use that to go get extra oxygen bottles, extra breather bottles for our breathing apparatus, and just do kind of everyday chores. If someone has to go do training, you know, we'll take the plug buggy, not our personal vehicles back here. There's another larger, looks like a semi truck in here. That's a uh, decon tender. So we're not responsible for anything in there. We just store it here. But what's inside there is, uh, say you have a giant hazmat situation or incident where the guys need the showers and the people with the wands and everything like that. We got all that equipment stored over here. I uh, you know, lines on the ground, guys will play a paddle tennis and other things. We just kind of make, but take what we can kind of thing. Um, back here you see an extra ambulance. We do keep that. That's fully stocked and ready to go. So in case something breaks down, we can jump in that and get going. Um, keep more exercise equipment out. You know, just extra stuff. They're both been donated or anything that we can use. You know, just all hanging around. Um, it's in the back. We just have more supplies, more everything. And just, Fire department, we keep, uh, keep stock on a lot of things and just uh, have it ready. Back here is our hose tower. Yes, we do climb up there and drag up hose. Yesterday we were cleaning hose, so we drag it all out, brush it all out, and then we pull it up there and hang it. It dries for about a week. That's so what we have to do. Uh, yeah, I mean, is there any questions or anything I haven't answered? Anybody want to see anything? Hey, hey. Evan, you guys have. Nick, any questions, you guys? Lima, you have any questions? Evan, yeah. do you have any questions? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Whatever. The question was, what determines what, what you're going to get? So say you call 911, are you going to get a fire truck, you get an ambulance? Different fire stations will have different personnel. You fire places everywhere? You fire places everywhere? You go, you fire. When I say, I went here. Okay, when I say it. Did they help you out? No. Yeah. Okay, perfect. They got me a doctor place to give me a blood test. Yep, that's what we do. Take care of you. Evan, did you have a question? Do you fire the mountains? Do you put out? Do you put out the mountains? Yes, we do. You see brush fires? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see those, uh, you know, the hills and everything like that on TV where California's burning? Mm-hmm. They do. We send out resources from Los Angeles City Fire Department. Mm-hmm. We'll send out as many resources as we can, considering, you know, budget cuts, but we'll send out people to go help out. They have other firefighters that specialize in that, but we'll come out. We have equipment, and we're ready to do that, too. Yes, we do that. Else? Go ahead. Um, we're to do it. Um, it took it took me about it took me about seven years to become a firefighter. I started when I was when I was 18. The minimum requirement to be 18 high school graduate, non-smoker. But uh, it's actually a very competitive field, very competitive job to get into. Like I said, it took me about seven years. I got my EMT license. I got my paramedic license. I went to a private fire academy. So once you get all that, you go through the process of uh, putting in an application, uh, doing a physical background, doing a mental background, and doing a medical background. And then when you get in the tower, it's an 18, 18 week tower. We have one over here at Fire Station 81. And then it's just, uh, you know, I started with about 60 people in my class. We ended up with about, uh, I think, 27. So it's just physical stuff. You learn about the ladders, you learn about hoses, you learn about everything. And that's about it. And then you do a one year probation. And then once you pass everything, you go to three different houses during your probation, you pass everything, you can be a firefighter. <laughs> so it's a little bit, a little bit of process. Thanks. So, what else? Questions? Yeah. What happened to the action? Just recently? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we were actually on that. It was like a car, it was like a little Jeep Cherokee or, or Mercury or something caught on fire. So, although we were there first, we only had a little tiny fire extinguisher, we can't put it out. So, like, for a we called for the engine, the guys were...